In the case of dual registration player, do both clubs have to agree to cancel the agreement? Yeah. Is it uh, about any player in general? Uh, yeah, no, you, to, that's in the, what, what's in the contract is that, um, and to be fair, even when they set this up at the beginning, don't be taking me word for word here. <laughs> um, no, you can't really, I'm only joking. When they, when they set the contract up, the RFL put it in place at the beginning of the year. And I'm not sure whether the RFL actually had wrote down the contract. I think it snuck up on them. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know whether the, the reserves was going to be under 21s or under 20s, because that has massive implications on, on a lot of players' livelihoods. Because if there's, um, if there's say, seven or eight that are under 20, uh, 21 years of age in Super League club, and um, four of them players will get shown the door because you're only allowed three over, over age players. Now, they had no idea what they were doing, where they were going to go with the players that were going to be left on the scrappy. Um, were they going to drop down into the championship? Were they going to give them dispensation to, to continue going on? And um, I, I think the dual registration is, is fantastic, mate. For, for people to, for us, to use the likes of, of um, Liam Farrell, who could be a, a future international in my eyes? Uh, it's fantastic. He's gone into he's gone into Wigan, and, and I heard a lot. And again, the rumours that you that you pick up, I heard a lot of people saying, "Was it when did he pull us out the game? The Dewsbury game? The Dewsbury game? He didn't play for us, did he?" Well, if you look at the game that Wigan played on the Friday, they picked up an awful lot of injuries. So Michael Maguire phoned me up and said, "Look, he said, I don't want him playing for you." In, uh, in the Dewsbury game, just in case we, just in case he gets injured in that game and he can't play for us on the Easter period, he said I can't take that chance. So we said, well, absolutely no problem. If we know where we are with it, we'll um, we'll obviously we'll do something else. We'll bring somebody else in. We'll bring some youngsters in. But Liam Farrell's still a dual registered player. So we've got Ben Davis on loan. Um, we've already told him we're about um, us keeping until the end of the year. Um, we've then got um, Christine, who obviously I'm talking with St. Helens about what the, the possibilities of, of them needing Christine for a lot longer than what um, we'd like, although he's not our player, but because um, they've picked up some serious injuries. Obviously, they've lost Cecil Liola for the year and a number of other players that they've got injured. And, and if there's something else that we need to do to bring other players in, we will. And at the minute, we are in talks with a, a number of clubs because we do need to we do need to strengthen. My name is Stuart Stuart Glendening, and I've actually been a Witness fan all my life. Um, and like many fans, actually, I was introduced by my father, um, and I know that's the case for many fans because we've gone out and interviewed a lot of supporters. We've interviewed a lot of supporters of Blackburn, Rovers, Burnley, and Preston North End. Um, uh, and it's a strange thing. Uh, my dad introduced me to the club and I have been a big fan. And then what happened about five or six years ago, uh, my father unfortunately had a heart attack. And my father lives in North Wales and he was in a hospital in Bottle Widden in North Wales. And I was outside phoning members of the family, some of them in, in witness, just to let them know how he was getting on. And I was I, I was just struck by this thought that what if he passes away? You know, he's a season ticket holder for witness. And I thought, do I phone the club to let, to let them know he, he, he's passed away? And I thought, if I do, what, what are they going to say? And what have they got to offer? And I know these days that the supporters direct have the brick. So you can actually now have a brick uh, on the wall. You have your name name put on the, in, in the club. And I think that's a really, really good thing. And it's, you know, perhaps it's a shame it did, that didn't exist then and there. Um, the only thing about a brick though, is it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't share your memories and stories. So if I look at the, the bricks in the North Stand or the South Stand, you know, to me they're just names because I don't actually know that many witness fans because I was brought up in North Wales. And I just thought, you know, it's incredibly sad that someone could support a team all their life and then all those memories and stories they've got, um, you know, they're just, 
they're just lost. And it, wouldn't it be great if there was some way of preserving fans' memories and stories? Third place is a, a lad who I think has um, he, he's come to the club, and I think he, it shows that how good of a player he is. A, a number of years ago, I actually played with him, and I just think he's a he's a standout performer. And he, he looks. Um, really good both on and off the pitch. He leads by example on the pitch and I, I think that as the season gets on, I know he's just got a bit of an injury, but uh, as the season gets on and next year when we're leading into Super League, you'll see this player really come of age and that's Dave Allen. Well, I didn't even, I didn't even have anything to think so far, Paul was here. Thanks there. Uh, Dave, just a, a few quick questions uh, before we move on. Obvious, start with the obvious one. How's your foot? Um, it's getting there, it's a bit slow at the moment. Um, just a dummy ankle ligament, so just can't really do much, apart from in the pool and boxing and stuff like that. So it's a bit frustrating, but I'm getting, getting there. Now, second place is a player that I talked to at the beginning of the year, and I was I listened to him, what, what he wanted to achieve, what his aspirations were, that he wanted to get back into the, the big time. He was shown the door by a, a club, and I think he's been absolutely outstanding, both on and off the pitch, as a person, his quality, on the pitch, his quality. The big forwards who are trying to get back, the big fat lads, always look up and they know that if this lad catches the ball, he'll take it forward and they'll try and win in that first play, and that's Matt Gardner. Have you just walked the longest way to milk that applause? You were just going in and out then, and the tables just suddenly keep clapping you. Hey Matt, we've just spoken to David about the injury uh, situation, but I have to say, in spite of all that, when you look at the players on the pitch, everybody seems to be enjoying the game and, and enjoying what's going on at the moment, in spite of the injuries. It's not fair to say, you, you seem like a really happy bunch. Yeah, everyone's just really good mates, and, like everybody gets on with each other. Everybody knows like it's going to be tough the next couple of weeks, having so many injuries, and everybody's prepared to just do it tough for the next couple of weeks. And obviously, sat on that table, it's either Anthony Thackeray or his missus that's won this one. <laughs> so um, the reason why the, the, the coaching staff went went for Thacks, he he. he um, you look for people in your team that's going to come up with a with a big play, and you do need the likes of Dave Allen. You need Matt Gardner to come to come up and return the ball with some vim and vigor. But Anthony Thackeray, when he's playing on the front foot, he's playing behind a, a pack that's going forward. Smithy getting out from dummy half and jumping. We seem to be really, really dangerous when we're not giving penalties away. Um, like the other night, the first 20 minutes, we were so dominant. We didn't we didn't lose possession. We didn't give a penalty away, and we were absolutely all over them. And as soon as things start to go against, but this man, I think, is is probably one of the, the best lads playing outside the Super League when he's playing in such a dominant team. That's Anthony Thackeray. Uh, congratulations um, on that award. You, uh, perhaps more than anybody, appears to be having the time of your life at the moment, really enjoying what you're doing. In spite of the fact that you've played six, you've played seven, you've played full back, does it make a difference to you where you are on the pitch or have you just got your thing and that's what you do? Um, no, it doesn't really make no difference. Like um, Tez has just said, um, it's a team effort and when, when our forwards are going well, that's when people like us can... Um, work off the back of that and go off the back of the, the good work that they do. You know, we've got um, two, of the wing, two of the best wingers in the competition and then when our forwards get back behind the ball, you know, it makes life easy.